You shaped it in your mind. Total performance. Now the all-new Toyota Supra brings it alive. Super power created by a 3-liter, 24-valve, 200-horsepower engine. Super suspension, racing type, double wishbone, fully independent. Super cockpit, where you perform. The new Toyota Supra. Performance without compromise. Now the Supra dynasty begins. Who could ask for anything? We have some R35 GTR coils here that we're going to install in this 2JZ GTE VVTi and uh, we're going to use these adapter plates that are made by Autosports Engineering. Um, I believe this was a kit. came with a, some hardware, mounting hardware, and uh, we actually got the plugs here as well. Um, we're actually not going to use the plug that came with the kit. It's not going to work out quite as nice as we'd like it to so um, got some wire to wire them up with and then I've got some connectors for uh, for this for these so I'm going to show you soon how to mount them and I will go in time lapse and show you um, you know how, how it's uh, how it's done. So we have a plug right down here that um, has eight conductors. So one for power and ground, or two for power and ground, and six for each uh, cylinder uh, for the signal for each uh, coil. So um, during the time lapse, you could see that uh, we removed this uh, connector, um, which again is uh, right down here in my harness. It's kind of kicking down there. I'd unplug the uh, fuel pressure sensor, but uh, pretty easy to get to. And uh, took this cover off and basically pulled this guy out. So we have the adapters mounted, all but one I should say. The, the back one and the middle one went in just fine. Um, this front one is known to be a little bit of a booger because of an interference issue. Um, so we're going to have to unfortunately take a little bit off of the uh, corner here. Um, we're just going to have to shave a little bit down until we can get it to, to match up. You can see that it's not quite lined up. Um, it's off just a little bit. So we will take care of that. We'll um, grind a little bit away and uh, try to take as little off as possible just to get it to fit. So that I didn't remove too much material all at once, I just took a little bit of material off this front right-hand side, as you can see here. And I kept removing more and more of that material, and I found that there were a few other points that also interfered with the valve cover. So you just have to cautiously move this bracket front and back, left to right, and just keep removing material until you get an adequate fit. And I'll show you here in the next clip more of um, what was removed overall. 
All right, so I had to meticulously grind away at this. And uh, I actually had to use a Dremel. I tried to clean all the uh, shavings off. Anyways, um, I had to use kind of like a Dremel and a metal wheel and go between hand filing and using the metal wheel. And I actually had to use the metal wheel to kind of um, put a little bit of an arch on the inside of this. So let's see if I can get a better uh, angle of this. So if you look at it, it's kind of curved in almost towards the uh, bolt hole. Um, and I'm going to clean it up a little bit more, of course, but I just wanted to show you that it fits really well. And I'll show you here in a minute, but that's about all that I had to take off. I tried not to make it so that it'd be visible from the top. And it fits like a glove. The thing I dislike about these coils is they're kind of floppy in here with all the rubber. And they never, they never want to come back out without falling into pieces. So that's one thing I really don't like about this coil pack, but they uh, are known to be quite good performers. So we'll uh, wrestle with it, taking it in and out, and uh, hope it performs well. So we kind of have it placed in here right now. And one thing I'm not really wild about is uh, this one here really pokes out right towards the hot coolant area. Now the top of this uh, head might very well be that hot all the way across, but I don't really like the wires poking out of the back very much. So um, that's, that's the only negative thing that I don't like aside from having to shave away at the, uh, the adapter. So um, I'm going to get this wired up now and um, we'll be done. All right, so here we have the finished coil harness. And putting this all together was pretty boring, so I didn't want to didn't want you all to fall asleep. So uh, I spared you uh, all the pinning. I have another video that you can watch um, that kind of shows how how to uh, build this harness internally and connect it but uh, that's pretty much it it's done and uh, we'll go and install it here in a minute but um, even labeled it as you can see so yeah turned out pretty nice all right and i don't have it tightened down yet but uh you know it's just kind of loosely placed in here but uh here are the coils and in place and the harness is done all right um we're tuning the car i have it running in this garage and uh i've got some r35 coils all hooked up as you can see uh the wire is just kind of left kind of loose because i don't have it uh in the uh looming or in the ductwork that goes in here but uh as you can see it's installed we are running and uh, it's idling very nicely. 